Hey guys, Henny and Morton from Flip Normals here. In this video, we're gonna take you through some of our top sculpting tips in ZBrush. All of these tips are universal, so whatever you're sculpting in, if you're sculpting a blender, motor, whatever it is, it's gonna work for that as well. Before we get into it, make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell. This is the final result from our newly released uh, introduction to ZBrush 2020, and we take you through how to sculpt this entire thing. And this is related to our first tip. The very first tip we have for you when it comes to sculpting is you should work from really big to really small details. And what does this mean? Well, it means that when you see you have all the fine little pores here, little pimples, the small wrinkles, all that kind of stuff, those are the small things. And the big things here would be the overall shape of the skull, the ear, the mouth, the overall shape of it. So that's where we start. We will be starting from working from big to small. This is a principle which, for me, it really changed the way I've been, where I'm thinking about art. Uh, if you if you do paintings, it's the same thing. You work from the composition down to the individual elements and lighting. You block it in and so on. So let's look at the first guy here. This is this is how everything starts. You know, it's not it's not great, but this is where you you block in the main shapes. You see here, we're not thinking about any details whatsoever. We're starting from base mesh just because that makes our life a bit easier. And then we are um, just blocking in just the landmarks. This is not to get the design down. This is so that we have ears, we have the nose in our proximal spot, we have the eyes, and we have the mouth being open. And one thing I want to note here is just that as you get more and more experienced, you do more and more sculpts, it gets a lot easier to visualize the final result. Like at this point, it might, especially if you're just starting out, it might be hard to see how you can go from something like this to what we had in the beginning, where there's quite a big difference in terms of details, even the shape, the silhouette is also kind of different. But the fact that we have all the primary landmarks in there, that allows us to then, you know, modify it to, to get closer to something that we want. Then we will refine it. This is, there's obviously a big difference between these between these two, let's just uh, bring it up. If you hit Shift S, you can make a snapshot and you can see the difference. So what's, what's happening now is that uh, we're getting in the actual eyeballs. We were refining the, a lot of different shapes. We see we get it more rounded down here. We have a central line here and we're just getting more of the feeling into it. Obviously we're shaping a lot of um, a lot of things as well. Like we completely kill this chin. Uh, the ears are a lot smaller. And But it, overall we're just working from from uh, big to small. We're just getting more and more granular. And then let's have a look at the, the next step. This is again getting more granular, but also adding teeth. It's really important that you're adding all the elements you need. It's, it's really, it's, it's so important that you, you're adding them because otherwise he, he looks like this old grandpa who can only eat soup when this is supposed <laughs> to be a ferocious troll. So we're going and just getting a bit more granular. You can see that a lot of things are still exactly the same, but we're just getting more refinement in all the different areas. It's kind of like a, it's kind of like a printer in a way where you're like line by line, you're sort of adding more and more details. Yeah, exactly. And then between these two, there's a lot of difference. Like here, you can see if we go back and forth between these two, it's a little big difference in in the face. So this is where you know now we have all the the landmarks down. You know everything is here. Now we're going in and we're actually refining the shapes a lot more, and we are adhering more to the original concept. You could of course stand it will go go with the original concept from the beginning, but I prefer to block it out and keep it messy, get everything in there, and then we can start to really refine it. You can see as well, particularly from the side, if we go between these two, you can see there is a huge difference between these two. But it's it's mostly proportional. But but the overall thing is, again, we go from uh, from big to small. You can also see we've gone in here and cleaned up a lot of the of the shapes. There are no more brush strokes, and we're just really trying to get nice, clean shapes. Which is kind of funny, because if you look at the final result, we have this incredibly detailed uh, sculpt of it. And there's nothing of this here, because again, from big to small. Yeah, right now, the, you know, there would be no sense in just putting in a lot of pores and figuring out a lot of the minute details, because we're still working on the shapes. And then we will refine it even more. 
And this is where we're getting more into the mid frequency. When we keep talking about mid frequency, this is kind of what we mean. You can see that everything just becomes more refined and you're getting this level of detail between the, the main shapes. So here you see we have, there is, there is a frequency going here, you have this shape going here, you have this, it goes up, goes down, and you have more separation between these. But if you look at, were to look at what we had before, the, the shapes are incredibly clean. So we're just breaking the shapes up a lot more and we're adding shapes within shapes. If you don't do this, then your, your final sculpts are never going to work. You really need this level to, uh, to make sure it's, it's, it's working. I would say that's the number one issue I see, not just for beginners, but also more advanced artists, that they tend to forget about this step. They, they get really good at the silhouette and they get really good at, you know, some of the concepting and then figuring out how do I over detail this sculpt. A lot of the time they miss the mid frequency step, which is kind of like the backbone of the detailing step. Without this in here, your sculpt is never going to look as good as it could have. Yeah, we have a whole separate video on this from last year where we, uh, we cover how to really think about mid frequency. What specifically is that? And then we are getting into with even more mid frequency and we're getting we're adding asymmetry to it as well. Now you can see that everything is just more refined and uh, we are been breaking up the symmetry. You can see here in the mouth, everything is just nicely broken up and you can see this really nice skin feeling. But again, you're not seeing any pores or anything like that. This is all sculpted by hand. You're not seeing any stuff from alphas or anything like that because it's still at this level, right? It still doesn't really, it's still not there. It's still, the shapes are kind of there. If we were to zoom out, they would probably look quite similar at like this level. But it's still not, it's still not there. But at this level, now we have set up a lot of the shapes to really work within, work for, as a foundation for the pores. If, if mid frequency like shapes within shapes, now we have shapes within shapes within shapes. So we're just getting smaller and smaller and smaller. And then finally, now we have the um, the only difference between these two is really we have gone in and added a lot more alphas and some shape changes here and there, but really just gone in and just add all this crazy all this crazy level of resolution which you can see here, which this is only possible because we had good shapes around it. Yeah, it's actually interesting seeing the before and after for number six and number seven. Shape wise, not really nothing has changed, but you can see because we've sculpted in all the mid frequency here, the pore detail is a supporting detail that just adds that last bit of realism. Without the mid frequency there, that would kind of fall flat. And this is what this is what this is the level which makes it realistic as well. If you if you don't have the pore level, it can look like a cool statue or sculpt or concept. But if you want to actually fool the human eye, you need this level of breakup here as well. This is also the level which is a lot of fun to do because you can just go crazy with this as well. What a lot of people do though is they would add the pore level. Let's just get just get back guy back here where we can see the pores. So something like this so now you can see a hint of the pores here what they would do they would add this this level at, at this stage where we can see we're like a whole level of frequency b behind or even at this stage this is probably the most beginner stage yeah, where yeah. you would add the high frequency here and now you're wondering why doesn't it look real well it's because you're two level behind two levels behind you're missing like a first a whole refinement pass between these two but then you're also missing a whole refinement level between these two so you really have to build each step up from the last one and you can't rush into it. It, it is hard though, because how do you know which, which level you should take it to before you're adding the pores? And that is honestly just tricky. It's, it just takes experience to get to there. Yeah, one thing I would say, just to help you guys a little bit out there is that once you're at the stage where you, it's still kind of a blank slate, but you can start adding details to it. The clay buildup standard and Damien standard brush are probably your preferred tools or should you be, be your preferred tools there and just in terms of volume and, and carving in with the Damien standard in, in, to make contrast between shapes. Then our second tip, because we are full of tips today. <laughs> so here we have, uh, we have our guy from one of the earlier steps. And I want to show you how, how we prefer to sculpt. Morton and I kind of end up at, we kind of with the same sculpting technique kind of by accident, I suppose. Totally by accident, yeah. <laughs> and, and the way it revolves around using the clay builder brush, 
and you can keep the alpha off or you can keep it to a simple alpha. Doesn't really matter that much. This is personal preference. I prefer alpha 06. I believe you prefer to sculpt without yeah, alpha. Yeah, no, no alpha, yeah. So no alpha. But we're just going to be using this for now. So um, I'm going to subdivide this up uh, just, so, just so it's a bit clearer. The way I prefer to sculpt is I'm working across the shapes. So what does this mean? Let's say we want to refine this shape here because it's quite messy. Now, instead of sculpting like this and adding volume this way, I find this to be really hard in when it comes to controlling it because now I'm controlling the length of it. But what I prefer to do, I, try, I prefer to work across like this. So I do strokes like this. Yeah, one thing, one advantage about, about this technique is something that we talked about before. Treating the form like this where you're sculpting across the form. That is, that's treating it as a 3D form. It's a, it's a piece in 3D space. Whereas you're sculpting with the form, you're treating it more as a drawing. Like if you're, if you're with the form like that, it's more like you're trying to draw the shape instead of trying to sculpt the shape. Yeah, it's, it's really easy for you to go in here and you're adding a scar to, or you're adding wrinkles to him. And now he has like the old man wrinkles up here and you're just going in and you're just adding wrinkles. <laughs> yeah. and, and now you're done. This is drawing the shape on. But what we're, what we're trying to do is maybe you can add a little hint of some wrinkles here. Uh, let's do something like this. And then we're going across the shape to make sure the volumes are here, that we're sculpting it as proper volumes. If you do it, if you do it this way, you're going to have far, far, are better volumes. Yeah, if you're drawing it in, then in most cases, like Henning just did there, it should be as a guide, not as the final thing that defines the shape. So let's just sculpt a little bit more so we can sh show what I mean. So what you often get though, is you get brush strokes this way, and less so with Morton's technique, because uh, well, Morton's uh, no alpha, because then there isn't any alpha to do it. But uh, uh, even with, with this one as well, you, you, you won't get a whole lot, but you will get some. So let, let me show you how you get, get rid of these brush strokes. So here you have brush strokes now. The natural way of doing this is how nearly all beginners do it. They hold on the shift key and they go smoothie mode. <laughs> and now the details are gone. And yeah, you, you just successfully smooth out the brush strokes. But you also kill the entire shape here. Maybe you had a lot of interesting volumes going around here. You had a lot of things here going like this. And now they're just all gone. What I prefer to do is I prefer to set the alpha to a lower amount and then just working over the shape like so. Just really refining it, holding on the Alt key as well, just so I can carve in, and then just working it up. And uh, now you can see that we're, we're getting rid of the, of the brush strokes while also refining the shape. So I, I never really smooth it out. Uh, I really prefer to, to work up the volume uh, to, to take it to the next level. So it's not that I do a, a, I do a refinement pass and smoothing pass. I kind of keep working on this at the same time. And you just get this really lovely undulation here. Yeah, you get a really nice sort of it. like tertiary form in there. For me, my technique is kind of like a mix of the two. I, I do way more sculpting than I do smoothing. But smoothing helps me to, uh, not as a broad brush, but as a tiny brush, I will go in some areas, smooth them out a little bit, very, very subtly with a very low intensity sculpt on top. So it's like a mix of the two. But an overuse of the smooth brush, I think, is, is, is something that you tend to see a lot, especially when people start sculpting, because it's a natural, it's a natural step. You, know, you want to smooth out the shape, well, use the smooth brush. Whereas in reality, adding more form to it to sort of help fix the, fix the differences between the peaks and the valleys really allows you to create some more interesting shape in there, I think. So I can see here the volume is now a lot, a lot cleaner and more refined than it was. And we, we barely touched the smooth brush, just a little bit, hold on, shift key and just, just add a little bit of variation to it. So yeah, this is, uh, this is really how I prefer to work. Refine, go over and refine it at, uh, at all times. Get in the volumes and work the volumes up. Don't draw the volumes in there. We have a whole video on this as well called How to Sculpt Like a Pro in ZBrush. And we, we, show, we show this way more in depth. Then the last tip we have is use the silhouette view. This is something we have just conveniently hidden here. <laughs> so you have to be in Seabridge 2020 for this. And if you are, you can. You, it's going to be there by default. But if not, you can go to preferences and we have thumbnail down here in the bottom. And I've put both of these thumbnail and silhouette view here. So now I can uh, disable it or I can set the silhouette view to be enabled. So you can see there's a small view of what the character looks like or you can only see the silhouette. Let's go back to this, and now we can start to explore the silhouette of it. And let's make the silhouette way bigger. So the reason the silhouette is so important is because this is really one of the first things people are going to see when they see a character. You can so quickly identify 
what character is what based on the silhouette. If you have like Mickey Mouse versus Donald Duck, it's an instant read. And your goal should really be to make sure that your characters read as fast as humanly possible. It's also a great tool just for pure from a design point of view. Like here you can see that it's not a very interesting silhouette. It just it just looks like a potato with a little carved hole into it here. You can kind of get what kind of character this is. You know, he's clearly not like a super good guy, but it's not very clear what it is. Then we can go in here, and now you can see that the silhouette is more refined right away. But you can still see it's still not a very good design. Uh, you see here that this is a completely straight line, and then it's just a bit messy. Uh, it, it right. It doesn't. It just doesn't flow very nicely into each other. The different shapes for it, and it's very boxy. He's a homeless potato man without teeth. Yes, exactly. And then we can add uh, teeth to it, and we can refine it a bit more. So the problem I'm having here is that it's almost like a 90 degree angle. It goes straight down, and then it goes almost straight to the right. So now we can start to refine it a bit more, where it becomes a bit more organic, and you can add the teeth to him as well. So. You can see this, of course, in the viewport here as well, but it's way easier to see this if you're looking at the actual silhouette view. It's not so clear from the front view because the vast majority of this character here is um, is uh, is hidden by by his body. So I prefer to look at this in the sil in the side view, and then you can see something big happens when we're really just going in and just changing him dramatically. And now he looks so much more interesting. Now his uh, his body is a lot higher up. And you can just get kind of care this guy is. He's it's definitely a creature. It's kind of humanoid, but it doesn't. It, now it doesn't just look like a potato with a little mouth into it. And then we're refining it and just going in and just trying to add some more volumes to it and trying to refine the volumes a bit more. And then just keep doing that. Just you're gonna see less and less silhouette change the further you go along because this ties into our main point that you should work from big to small. And that's exactly what we're doing here. We're going from big shapes, like almost a generic base mesh, to more, to smaller shapes, smaller shapes, and then we just keep refining it. And between the last levels here, yeah, sure, you can see a lot of stuff happening here, but the main design really isn't changing that much when it comes to the silhouette. So you can, of course, go closer and closer and closer here, and then you're gonna see more and more changes. Uh, so the the less your silhouette changes between the different uh, levels and the more you're sculpting on it, the the more solid your design is most likely going to be. So yeah, those are our 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 three tips for uh, sculpting in uh, Seabrush. First one again, go from uh, really big shapes to really small shapes. And then uh, sculpt across the shape. Use clay, the clay builder brush with an alpha or with a simple alpha, or without an alpha or a simple alpha. And then just work across the shape and avoid using a smooth brush if you can. And then use the silhouette view as much as possible, particularly when you're designing characters. So yeah, we really hope this has been useful for you. We, we would love to hear what uh, tips you have for actual sculpting technique, if there are any magical brushes you found. Uh, or, you know, whatever it is you're thinking about when you're sculpting to get appealing sculpts. So let us know in the comments, like the video and subscribe and also hit the little notification bell as well. If you're looking for training or high quality assets, make sure to stop by the Flip Normals Marketplace. And if you're interested in supporting us by buying our merchandise, you can check that out in the description below.